Thank you, Sean. I'm charging it right now, so. And then we don't have to do the clicker or anything. I have not practiced with that, so I don't I know. know nothing. I know nothing. So the other thing you want to do is like, Sean Yeah, she's had it up here before. And I changed the battery, so it should be good. And this picks up sound really well. Oh, yeah, we could. Go. Let's yeah. do that. And then we'll we, leave those there. Yeah, and then when we move the chairs for the circle, and then once they're done, we'll just sit there.
see you around.
My gun. Okay. Okay, thank you. For the first time in four years, we actually had a live drum group brought to you by the Get Together Boys, all staff and students from the school here. Okay. Thank you very much. I'd also like to point out that the drum we use was a hard-earned task from one of our senior students. He scraped that hide with the help of his friends and he carved out that drum ring with the help of his friends and we put it together just in time to bring it out for graduation. So thank you very much for your effort and direction and willingness to do that, Mr. Mark Parker. That's his drum now. He gets to, he gets to take that home with him. Somehow, some way, somehow, some way I gotta get it to Valentine, Nebraska. And he's gonna drive up from Macy, Nebraska to go pick it up. Okay, we'll move on forward with a, a quick, uh, quick uh, word to the creator. Thank you for today. Indian School graduates Grandfather God, watch over our graduating students and all of our students and families traveling today. I pray that you help them to make wise decisions and follow their heart in a good way and to remember their good times at Chamawa Indian School here. To remember that we all care for them and all wish them the best and the good luck in their future. Not be afraid to think of Chamawa as a good times and a good place and a place to stop by and visit and to think about. Yeah, Grandfather God, this last year, we we're very thankful to have our students here on campus and they made this a bright place, a good place. With that in closing prayer for all the staff here at Chamawa Indian School to thank everybody for their hard work. Oh, that does it. Amen. All right, Miss Amanda, here we go. You may be seated. Hi, my name is Amanda Ward. I am the school superintendent here at Chamau Indian School, and I'd like to just welcome everybody that came. I was telling the seniors in the gymnasium just before is that I'm so incredibly proud of these kids because the last two years has been so rough. We have a really small class, but I am more proud of this class, I think, because they stuck to it. They were resilient and they did what it needed to be done so that they could graduate on time. They didn't let online learning stop them. They didn't let COVID stop them. They had a goal and they met it. And I'm so incredibly proud of you guys. So what I would like to do is first, I would like to um, recognize some of the people here that have helped these kids along the way. Um, the first group I would like to recognize is anybody that is in the recreation department or residential department, please stand up and get some applause. <laughs> These are the people that made sure that they were safe at night and had activities to do, uh, were their moms and dads while they were here at school, aunts and aunties and aunts and uncles and grandpas and grandmas. And so they had a lot of influence on you guys while you've been here. Academic department, teachers, ed techs, please stand up. These are the teachers and the people that have helped educate these young men and women. Facilities, please stand up. Yeah. 
While it may not look like it right now, these are the people that take care of our campus and keep it looking spick and span. Um, we are in the middle of a few projects, as you could probably see out there. So this is not representative of what the campus looks like at all times, but we're in the process of a brand new um, decorative fencing project, and we're in the middle of doing all of the water pipes in the entire campus. So things are a little torn up, but they're the ones that keep the campus running. Food service. Anybody from food service in here? Can you please stand? to say that this year the food service program has been amazing um, kids got things that they asked for they we were they were given a prom dinner that was second to none I hear I was sick so I couldn't come but I hear it was an amazing prom dinner um, senior breakfast yesterday for you guys but they keep keep the kids fed and happy and then we have some people that are partners with the school. Um, I'd first like to recognize Indian Health Service. I know they came in, I just don't see them. Oh, there they are. Can you stand and be recognized? They were truly partners with us during this whole COVID situation. Um, they were so amazing at helping us manage the isolation and quarantine dorms, come up with the plans of what we needed to do, testing the kids so that we could make sure that the campus was safe. And that, in addition to all their regular medical optometry and all the other appointments that they have. So we really appreciate our partnership with IHS. Um, we also have the Daughters of the American Revolution somewhere here. Oh, there they are. The Daughters of the American Revolution provide a lot of things for our students. They um, do the Christmas party for our kids. They provide things that are needed for the campus. They um, have helped us with the agricultural program. They've helped us with um, all sorts of different things, not to mention the scholarships. And I'll tell you a little bit more about those in a few minutes, but they provide scholarships to our students. Um, and this year we offered almost $30,000 to scholarships to Chamao students. <laughs> George Fox University, are you here? Anybody from George Fox? We partner with George Fox. They provide us interns and um, staff to help us with the special education program and other programs here on campus. Office of Justice Services with the BIA I believe we have a couple of our officers here in the back as our school resource officers. Um, we also have Friends of Trees here, I believe. They handle our conservation corps and they've been doing some new um, plantings and, and things for our swamp and some um, conservation work here on the campus. Now, how about the parents and the families and the supporters of all these students? Can you please stand and be recognized? <laughs> Seniors, I hope you looked around and looked at all those people that not only do you have Chamawa staff and partners that support you, but you also have families that support you. I hope you saw that. There were a lot of people that you should be very, very proud of. So one of the things that started many, many years ago, and I'm not sure how many states we have here today, because we have a smaller graduating class, but how many people, do we have anybody here from Alaska? Oh, we have a few. All right. That's a trip. I would probably say they're probably the farthest away, would you think? How about Arizona? Montana? 
Okay. Nebraska. <laughs> I put that one in there just for you, Mark. California. Oh, a few. Okay. Oregon. Washington. How about South Dakota? A few. North Dakota? Utah. Anybody from Utah? Oh, I hear a couple. And how about Minnesota? Wow. Oh, New Mexico. I don't know how I could have forgotten New Mexico. Did I forget anybody else? Kansas. All right. Did I hear Hawaii? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, Daughters of the American Revolution, they provide us with, like I said, a lot of scholarships for our kids. And on Monday, we were able to announce a lot of those awards, but some of the students that received the awards were not there, nor were their families to um, hear about them. So I just wanted to run through the list of the scholarships that we gave out and who they were given to. So you'll be hearing from her in a little while, Tracy Lucier, valedictorian. Our salutatorian's recovering from COVID and in South Dakota, but he will be here via videotape and he was the salutatorian. Samantha Anton received an award for outstanding achievement. David Jackson, you guys could stand up so they know who you are. David Jackson, fine arts. Daniel Hanyamtua, athletics. Liliana Bear Crane, athletics. Ayana Hernandez, science. Unfortunately, she's unable to be with us. Corey Mann, math. Justine Williams Alvarez, liberal arts. Turnaround student of the year, Mark Parker. Leadership student of the year, Samantha Antone. And we have a memorial scholarship in the name of Billy Ferris, a former student that was killed in action. And Corey Mann received this award. There was a special scholarship in honor of um, Chris Meineke, who is a, uh, was our national advisor for, I believe, 15 years. And um, so her chapter, her Daughter of the American Revolution chapter, the Beaver chapter, um, provided Justine Williams Alvarez a scholarship for um, college in her name. We also have another um, student who had passed away and um, her family has set up a memorial scholarship fund for her and this Melissa Abel and Liliana Bear Crane was the recipient of that award. Several years ago, benefactor M. Drew Severy, um, we didn't know of this person until they passed away and provided um, a very large chunk of money for scholarships for our students. And every year we're able to give about five awards out of this scholarship foundation. And this year it went to Ayana Hernandez, Liliana Bearcrane, Jessia Ivins, Samantha Antone, and Justine Williams Alvarez. Abby's Closet 
is a foundation that gives um, prom dresses to students every year. And Samantha Antone was the recipient of that scholarship as well as the East Salem Rotary Scholarship. We also um, are fortunate to um, be asked every year to participate in the Nellie Patch or the Nellie Thompson Dorothy Patch Scholarship Fund. And these are two teachers from the Salem area that um, taught students of color and wanted to be able to provide scholarships and college funds for students that may be um, first generation college goers or students of color. And these recipients were Samantha Antone, Tracy Lucier, Ayana Hernandez, Mark Parker, David Jackson, Dream Jose Espuma, and Daniel Hanyamtua. <laughs> Students from all over the city of Salem apply for these scholarships, and every year I would say that our students, they have to write an essay and they have to do all of these things. Um, our students are probably the ones that benefit the most from this particular scholarship, so we're very proud about that. So congratulations to all of the students. If you didn't get your scholarship certificates, come see me in my office after graduation and I have that information and how to obtain your scholarships, okay? Be sure and come and see me. I'm going to turn this over now to Ryan Cox, the assistant principal, so that he can introduce our student speakers. Thank you, Ms. Ward. Okay, good morning everyone. Welcome uh, guests, parents, graduates. Bear with me a little bit, uh, I'm a little rusty. We have not had uh, parents here or a graduating class in front of us for quite some time. So this is very unique to us uh, post pandemic. So I'm just really excited and honored to be here in front of you guys today. Uh, so I have the pleasure of introducing uh, two guest speakers today, student speakers. Uh, one will be presenting uh, by video, and that is Tayshawn White Hat. He is our salutatorian, and he did receive a $3,000 scholarship. So we will play his video shortly, pending no technical errors. We also have uh, present with us today, Ms. Tracy Lucher. She is our valedictorian. Please come up. <clears throat> Tracy's graduating with a 3.57 GPA, and she earned a $5,000 scholarship from the Daughters of the American Revolution. You may know Tracy from her infectious laugh. <laughs> Hopefully you'll get to experience that laugh. It's, it's awesome, and I'm very proud of you. And I'm gonna turn it over to you. Do you have your speech? It should be up here. It's right here. Okay, would you like to hold the mic? Or I can put it here, you wanna hold it? Speak up. Okay. You want to hold it? All right. All right. I. <laughs> I don't know if my hat's going to fall. I'm kind of a nervous wreck right now. <laughs> but my name is Tracy Lusher. I'm from Minnesota. I'm proudly enrolled in Red the Red Lake Band of Chippewa Indians. The reservation I grew up on is called Red Lake. Sorry, give me a second. <laughs> Before I went to Chamawa, I was having a hard time dealing with my personal life, so I couldn't really be myself the way I could be here at Chamawa. My freshman year is when I started to make progress on myself and take the steps to who I want to be perceived as. During this, I stayed in my room, not letting myself go outside due to the fact I lost inspiration on doing any activities provided except my passion in drawing. My sophomore year, I started to make connections with upperclassmen along with my classmates. I felt myself coming out of my comfort zone. For the first time, I wasn't stuck in my room as often anymore. I, was still, I still didn't do any type of club or activity sophomore year. All I did was keep my grades and maintain my focus on saving money. Then our sophomore year got cut short due to the COVID-19 spreading worldwide. 
Junior year was probably the most unproductive and difficult year for some of us since not all of us are tech geeks, nor did some of us get equipped with good Wi-Fi, but props to Amanda, she, she still tried. And some students didn't have the time for school because of their home life or had different priorities. I kept myself on my main goal, which now has finally come. Soon after junior year ended, I got word that Chamal was potentially opening their doors. I felt relieved that in-person learning was becoming an option again, especially since my chapter, my last chapter of high school was approaching an end. A lot has happened in my senior year. I only wish I could have cherished the time and or even taken advantage of the opportunities that slipped past my fingers. But all I could do was take the time to reminisce on, on the precious moments I did have. I grew to appreciate myself, but also become a bold per truthfully <laughs> bold person. I am learning to overcome obstacles, but also trying to treasure the moments that I knew wouldn't last forever. Now when we walk out these doors, we must acknowledge that time is short and what we want to do with what we are given by our creator. Do the right thing, use it wisely, but, all, but always, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but also use your past faults and missteps as lessons to grow into a better, bolder, and stronger person. Make changes not just for yourself, but for the future, but, no, but do not let ego consume your choices. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lucia. Appreciate that. Well done. All right. At this time, we will uh, cue up Mr. Tayshawn Whitehat's uh, video. Thank you. not. <laughs> there we go. I, I will tell that the sound was a little bit low, so I do apologize. Okay, 
Thank you, Tracy and Tayshawn. If you're watching through our live stream, congratulations. <clears throat> okay, at this time, I will uh, introduce our guest speaker. Uh, I think some in the room, students and staff, would probably consider this person more of a, a family member now as opposed to a guest. Uh, but I would like to introduce Tiffany Stewart. She's from the Confederated Tribes of the Siletz Indians of Oregon. Her parents are Thomas and Marlene Stewart. She comes from the Butler, Ben, Simmons, and Relatos families. She is a descendant from the Cherokee, Wasco, and Grand Ronde tribes. Tiffany graduated from Summer Academy of Arts and Science in Kansas City, Kansas. She grew up in the summers on her mother's reservation in Siletz, Oregon. <clears throat> she has earned her bachelor's degree from Haskell Indian Nations University and a master's degree from the University of Oregon in special education. <clears throat> she has taught in four states for 13 years from Head Start to college level courses. Currently, she is a doctoral student with the University of Arizona online in educational leadership. She has spent the past year working as an administrative intern at Chamawa Indian School for Miss Ward and I, which has been a pleasure. Uh, she has fully immersed herself into the school family and culture as student council advisor and yearbook advisor, plus many, many, many more things. She enjoys time with her children and family, beating, making regalia, and going to powwows and nadosh. At this time, I would like to present Tiffany Stewart. <clears throat> Thank you, Ryan. Tiffany Stewart, Wahamnishi, uh, Shushaninla, uh, Tilakum. Hello, I am called Tiffany Stewart, and thank you for the introduction, Ryan. And I would like to welcome all our guests in the room. And Mr. Robinson is going to be, it looks like Mr. Immons is going to be helping me with my slideshow today. Um, I have the privilege of talking to our graduates, class of 2022. But before I start, with the last lecture of your high school career. <laughs> We're gonna have my son come up. Nason, come on up. Yep. You go to the first slide, Mr. Emmons. Thank you. I like to give a land acknowledgement. This is the ninth tribe of Oregon. You can start on the top. There's Grand Rounds, the Celeste, Creek, Cold Hill. Acknowledgement today, my son is going to dance our Celeste dancers. And we're here, we're all in the coat, so we're shell people. And my son, um, through COVID, um, we continued our dances. Um, the knowledge that I have that I can pass to him. You ready? Thank you. It takes a lot of courage to get up here on stage. Thank you. So yeah, those are our nine tribes of Oregon. Some of you might recognize them from our casinos also. So if you're here, you can go visit some of you in. <laughs> I really do like you, Mitchell, and they have a beautiful casino over there, too. <laughs> Sorry, got way off there just now. <laughs> so graduates, the last lecture of your high school career. Now get your pen ready. Wait, do I see your hands? Do you not have a pen? Look under your seat. Go ahead and do my next slide, Mr. Emmons. As you're getting your pens ready, I was, oh, you can go back and slide. Come with me, and they um, made me 
teacher, we could do another different roll call. Um, give a little wave if you had a quarantine this last year. Me. Yeah, I had a quarantine like three times with my baby. Um, we could do how many days. I know a lot of you had to do a lot of days as graduates. Yeah, long, like one month. Yeah, a long time. Uh, quarantine. Uh, raise your hand if you made a mask in this last year. Give me a little wave. Give me a little wave. <laughs> All right. Uh, raise your hand if you did something other than your regular life, like blowing bubbles or jumping in puddles in this last year because of COVID. Just some odd things like, hey, I'm going to go do this. There we go. All right. I got a little bit of roll call going. All right. Here you go to the next slide. All right. For your note takers out there, we're going to have five points which this will help our slideshow um, technician up there also. So point number one. You go to the next one. Prioritize your goals. So some of you are heading into the workforce, some of you are heading into college, and think about your goals and your priorities. When you get home, you can take your pen. Those are brand new pens, so you might take a little bit of time to get them ready. Sit down and write your goals. What are your priorities? So I included this picture. My cousin on the left, that's Sam Lynch. She's now a pharmacist here in Oregon. And my cousin on the right, uh, that's Ashley Ramirez. And she's a counselor and helps people in recovery here in Oregon also. And this is at the University of Oregon. I included this picture because back when I started at Haskell Innovations University, yeah, all right, Haskell alumni in here? her coming of age ceremony. Now we haven't had a coming of age ceremony. This is in the late 2000s. Since we were put on our reservation, there hasn't been one coming of age ceremony for her to become from a woman or a little girl to a woman. And so I was invited to this event in our ceremony and I had to choose. Did I want to do my teaching uh, program or did I want to go and start off my year of school? to this ceremony. And something I regret is that I didn't reach out to my professors and staff because I missed that ceremony. The first one ever to happen after our reservation time. So I look back and I say, hey, now I said, I should have shared saying how important this ceremony was. And so to this day, we only only had two ceremonies on our reservation for coming of age ceremony. So um, prioritize your goals, share them with others. Next slide. Point number two, show up and be present. So this is something if you're going into college, and Sam, are you still taking notes? Okay, I thought you guys were gonna be doing the paper. Um, sorry. Um, yeah, you can take them later. Um, show up and be present. Your professors, if you're going into the call, uh, workforce, your employers will notice if you show up and you're present. The second part of this slide is the no cell phone. Now this is something I am working on myself. Look at your bag. Everybody should have a Chamawa sticker. Ryan, help me make these. So maybe you can put them on your phone or slide them in your phone case. They're actually stickers too. To remember all the time that you had it here at Chamawa. And all the time you put your cell phone down and you enjoyed your time with your friends. So be present, show up. And all those people, when you're with your fr friends and family, and cherish those moments. <laughs> Tell them how thankful you are. And yes, Tayshawn was saying, tomorrow's never promised. So enjoy those times. Point number three, take care of yourself. So I'm in the bag, I included a piece of dentalion. Did everybody get a piece of dentalion? It's white shell. A lot of the coastal people here will use the shell in our hands. Um, and so I wear earrings today. You see my son, he was wearing dentalion. A long time ago, this was used as old money um, for trading. And I included this because how I take care of myself is like 
I go and I eat cake or dahlia, I meet with my elders. This is how I take care of myself. My whole being, those are things you think about. Your whole being, how do you take care of yourself? On the left is my Auntie Vicky, and on the right is my Auntie Shirley, and they're my grandmother's sisters. And I believe that was at the National Indian Education Association Conference when I was in Hawaii. And so when I meet with my elders, and maybe you can meet with people that are important to you. Think about all the things um, that will help you, because you know what's best for you. Think about your goals and your priorities. My aunties and my family have helped me overcome many obstacles in my life. I've had many barriers. I've been homeless. I've gone through domestic violence. I've been affected by too many suicides in my family and in my community. Barriers come in many forms. Even when I went to college, the way I think, the lens that I use, the indigenous methods, those are all new things. So when you're stepping into a classroom, don't feel alone. These are barriers that you can overcome. So take care of yourself. Point number four. Enjoy life. Enjoy life, yes. Take the chances. You might want to take an internship during your uh, college years. You might want to take a new job. Or you might want to be the best blogger or YouTuber in your state. Mr. D. <laughs> but enjoy life. And the picture is here on the top right. I was a master for the uh, NASA pre-service teacher program for three years for John Space Center. Um, next to me is Dr. Begay, and in her speech, I remember she was talking about how she helped her community and the solar panels and how she was giving back. And my friend Elliot Bryant, he was also a master, and he represented the Virginia site for NASA. And longtime friend, uh, Dene, I mean, Dene of Navajos in here. <laughs> yeah. I, and I did include a world. Enjoy life. Yes. See the world. Oh, yes, and it's a stress reliever. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one I included in your bag for you is a star. Everybody have a star? Yes, everybody have a star. All right. Reach for the stars. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it. You might be facing difficulties even today. And you just say, I'm going to keep going. You fall down, you're going to keep going. You got to get back up. When I was going through my program, not a lot of people know this. On the right was when I earned my bachelor's degree, and on the left when I earned my master's degree. On the daily, I was struggling. And I was pregnant on the, in the left picture. And I wasn't sure if I could finish. And people said, Keep going. Keep going. Get back up. There was hard days. Even now in my doctoral program as a single mom, there are hard days. So you get back up. You keep going. And you reach for the stars. Congratulations, class of 2022.
Thank you, Tiffany. Appreciate it. Tiffany's a, a great example of uh, the endless possibilities that Native peoples have. And as she mentioned, prioritize your goals and reach for the stars. And you've got this. I have no doubt whatsoever. And I do look forward to calling you Dr. Tiff Tiff here soon. <laughs> All right. So future graduates, are you ready for the big moment? The, the pressure is on me to read out your names correctly with your tribes. So Mr. Carla, would you mind uh, raising the screen for us? And Miss Ward has one more message. After the time that they've finished. I um, need to apologize. When I was calling out the different departments, I forgot one really important, actually two really important departments. Um, that would be <laughs> They're the ones that keep the lights on and the, the payroll and everything going. And then travel department. I cannot believe I forgot the travel department. They're the ones who get the kids here and make sure that they're all the itineraries are done and, and everything, so I do appreciate those two departments as well. So, like Brian said, you guys ready? No? I mean, we can, we can take a minute if you need to. All right. Students. Please stand. Family, staff, and guests, it is my honor to affirm that these students have successfully completed the graduation requirements for the State of Oregon and the Bureau of Indian Education. Congratulations, students. You can now receive your diplomas, signifying the completion of all your hard work. Thank you, Ms. Ward. All right. Yes, after our graduates walk across the stage, there is a uh, photo opportunity over here. If the parents would like to just come over here at any point and take a picture, that would be excellent. All right, I have the pleasure of introducing our very first graduate, David Jackson, Gila River. <laughs> Mark Parker, Omaha. <laughs> Jessia Ivins, White Mountain Apache. <laughs> Greg Begay, Navajo. Liliana Bear Crane, Crow. Samantha Antone, Tahona Oakum. Elsie Nelson, Tlingit and Elliot. Graeme Jose Espuma, Cajona Open. <laughs> Daniel Haniamtoa, Gila River. 
I just want to say, I did it, mother. I did it, mom. I love you. <clears throat> Corey Mann, Skokomish. Tracy Lucier, Chippewa. <laughs> Justine Williams Alvarez, Gila River. And lastly, Talicia Tom. Uh, one more. Love me. And Miss Antone's trying to walk again. <laughs> Okay, let's give a, a round of applause to our graduates of the class of 2022. Ms. Antone? spelled like your typical Samantha. It's S-A-M-A-T-H-A, -A, no N. So I like to give people a hard time about that. But anyways, um, so, hello everyone, my name is Samantha Antone. I am from the Tahona Autumn Nation and the Navajo Nation. And this is my last duty as Miss Madam Antone, Madam President. <laughs> <laughs> I can't make any promises. <laughs> no. um, as most of you may know that I am this year's student council president and it's my honor to go ahead and give the turning of the tassel. So are you guys about ready? Oh, okay, <laughs> just kidding. <clears throat> All right, students, you, it says please stand, but you are still standing. As a symbolic gesture of your completion of high school, graduates, you may now turn your tassel. And parents, staff, and guests, as my last act as a student body president, it is my honor to present with you Chamawa Indian School graduating class of 2022. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, students. Just a little housekeeping. Um, the students are going to be exiting the auditorium, and they're going to be in the gymnasium for everybody to meet and greet and give them a handshake, a card, whatever, a hug. And after you have done that, um, please wait till they have completely left before we start dismissing. And then after that, you are um, invited up to our cafeteria, Crampton, where they have um, prepared an amazing meal. I'm not sure, what did we? Ribs. Ribs and barbecue. Oh, barbecue, yum. So we would like to invite everybody that's here to come on up and share one last meal in Crampton with the graduates. Yes. It's not, they can 
Drum. Mm-hmm.